Good morning. It's good to be here. It's good to be inside the house of God. It's nice to see faces back that have been around and about. It's good to have all of you here. It's good to hear the conversation. I'd ask that you stand and join us as we sing together. Kyrie eleison. and welcome to First Baptist Church Williamsburg. We're really happy to see everyone here and especially happy to see um, and learn about our visitors. There are visitor cards that are available at all the main doors. Please pick one of those up. Take just a few minutes to fill in some information, drop it in the um, offering box in the back or in the uh, plates when offering is collected. We want to get to know you better and we are happy that you are here today. Our monthly food pantry will be this Wednesday from 4.30 to 5 and if you can help in any way please see Norma Dunstan or contact Rebecca in the office and let either one of those know that you're going to be available to help. You're invited to celebrate the 50th wedding anniversary of David and Teresa Etter on Saturday afternoon from 1.30 to 3.30 um, in the CLC. Um, come join them as they celebrate this 
golden anniversary and they request that you not bring gifts, bring yourself and enjoy uh, the time spent with them. Okay, do we have any birthday offerings this morning? Okay, JL. Happy birthday, Shelly. Any others? All right. Don't forget our prayer card ministry. Many people who receive these prayer cards from us as individuals, even though they're on our prayer list, but when they receive those prayer cards, they know that they've been prayed for by name, specifically, and it's truly appreciated. Be sure to pick up today's worship bulletin for more announcements. There's a, a front and back page of announcements that can apply to many of you. Okay, I'm gonna let David Williams come and share some information. Just wanted to be sure and remind the deacons of the uh, monthly routine deacon meeting. The time change, will be, the meeting will be at 4.30. It'll be at 4.30 this afternoon. Uh, and I think we'll probably meet uh, uh, back here in the parlor at 4.30 this afternoon, chime change. Also, the uh, Deacon Brunch that Kim and I are hosting at our house next Saturday morning, that includes both active and inactive deacons. So um, I look to forward to seeing all of y'all there. Thank you. And then don't forget about the special music program that's going to be here at 6. Uh, we've got a youth group coming from Jackson, Tennessee. Jackson, Tennessee. And so uh, it should be a, a good time, and we want to support this youth choir. Um, I think they're going to have handbells and, and various things. So if you can come at all, please do so. Okay, let us pray. Our Father, let us be grateful for your mercy, grace, and love. Open our minds and hearts to the scripture and the message today. Let us remember to always be kind and share the love of Jesus through our daily lives. Amen. Jesus, I am so excited today. It's like I woke up and thought today is the day to get working for Jesus. Kat, I am so excited to find someone who's ready to take action and get things done. Oh man, I am that girl. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I've got something perfect for you. So let's get started. <sighs> what are you doing? Uh, stand up. Remember, we were going to take action. Yeah, but this is where I always sit. Right, but I need more than this. Oh, I know what you're getting at. Okay, Jesus, how much do you want? What? $50, is that enough? Oh, uh, that's not what I meant. Oh, uh, all right, well, 100 then, you know. I mean, you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> um, okay, but um, you might not want to cash this till next Friday, you know what I'm saying? Right. There you go. <laughs> okay, okay, Kat, really, I, I do think it's great that you want to give, but I want you to mentor a younger woman. Ooh, yeah, right. Well, Jesus, you know, I'm not really into, like, teaching people and stuff. I mean, I'm not, I don't really get into that. Okay. Um, okay, you, you know that woman at the office, Amy? Yeah. I want you to take her out to lunch. Tell her about me. Um, well, Amy is different. I mean, like, really different, you know? I know, but she needs to know about me. Mm, and I can tell the people at the church to call her. I mean, they get paid to do things like that. I want you to do that. Jesus, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. What are you doing? I am waiting for my coffee. <laughs> no, Kat, the problem is the you're too comfortable. Light reading. Some lovely calendar choices. <laughs> Would rather glue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all stand. Let's all stand together and sing Oh how I love Jesus and glory to his name.
us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we honor you today with our tithes and offerings. May we as a church always strive to be good stewards, giving glory to you, sharing your salvation plan, taking care of your church, and doing our part to help those in need. We celebrate and worship you through these offerings and our lives. May we also be cheerful givers. Amen. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for our salvation, Jesus. There is a light. Freedom. 
messages and music already. Uh, and now we hear God's word in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Therefore remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcision by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the cross. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new huma humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by the Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. 
In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his word. I have told Fred Craddock stories before. Fred Craddock was not a Baptist, but he taught several generations of preachers and is known for his stories. Hear one this morning. Every year around Christmas time, Fred would go back uh, to, I think, a town in western Tennessee to see his friend, uh, Buck. Buck owned a cafe, and he would go and get a free piece of chess pie and a cup of coffee every year. And so it happened this year, that this particular year, that Fred showed up and Buck said, let's go somewhere and get a cup of coffee and a piece of chess pie. And Fred said, isn't this a restaurant? Isn't this a cafe? He said, sometimes I don't know. They went somewhere else and got a cup of coffee and a piece of chess pie. And, and, and Buck was a little distraught. Buck said to Fred, did you see the curtain? Fred said, yes, I saw the curtain. I always see the curtain. He said, I got to take the curtain down. You see, there was a curtain uh, in uh, Buck's restaurant. Some of you remember this sort of thing. A curtain that allowed white people to come in from the street and separated from the colored people, the black people who came in from the alley. And Buck said, I've got to tear the curtain down. Fred said, tear it down. And Buck said, you come in every year and you tell me how to run the restaurant. You don't realize what's going on. I tear the curtain down, I lose my customers. I leave it up. I lose my soul. And so it is. Even a half century later, we have a lot of curtains that need to come down and they need to go in the garbage can. Buck was right. Some curtains have got to come down. The church needs to lead the way. In fact, Jesus led the way, but sometimes we don't follow him. You see, for too long the church has been complicit with curtains. The church was complicit when there was slavery. In fact, some preachers stood and preached that it was the right thing to do according to the Bible. The southern church particularly was complicit. Uh, and then there was Jim Crow. They called it separate but equal, but we all knew it was not really equal. And we were complicit. And then there was prejudice in your heart. And we were complicit. But just because you don't have prejudice in your heart, and just because you don't practice separation, doesn't mean you're not also complicit. Uh, the witness of the early followers of Jesus was that the very death of Christ meant that his death tore down walls, tore down curtains. Hear this verse from Matthew's gospel. Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. There was more than one curtain, more than one wall that existed in the Jewish temple. If you were a Jewish man, you could go beyond most of those walls. There was a wall that kept women from a certain part of the temple. There was a wall that kept Gentiles even further away. 
But according to Matthew's gospel and according to Paul's interpretation of the very death of Jesus as he interprets it in Ephesians, he died to, tort, to tear down the walls. At the death of Jesus, the walls came tumbling down. Those I am better than you walls. Those I've got money and you don't have money walls. Uh, those walls of privilege, those walls of hostility, those walls that divide, those walls that injure, they came tumbling down on Calvary that day. I like the way Eugene Peterson describes it in his paraphrase. We call it the message. The Messiah has come. The Messiah has made things up between us so that we're now together on this, both non-Jewish outsiders and Jewish insiders. He tore down the wall we used to keep each other at a distance. He repealed the law code that had become so clogged with fine print and footnotes that it hindered more than it helped. Then he started over. Instead of continuing with two groups of people separated by centuries of animosity and suspicion, he created a new kind of humanity, a fresh start for everybody. My hunch is, my sense is, we need to claim this fresh start in the 21st century. What difference would it make if we claimed this fresh start today? Well, I have three suggestions. And the first is, when the walls come tumbling down, everybody has full access to God. Everybody has full access to God. It is a common right of all believers to come into the presence of the living God. We, we don't have to go through any body. We have access to God on our own. There is no privileged class with God. We're all privileged because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Many of you have traveled this summer, and some of you are getting ready to travel. And if you're flying one of those big planes, it may be that you're up in first class, and it may be that you're not. Often we've flown these big planes overseas. And, and there's more than one occasion that we sit right behind the curtain. And we are told very explicitly, once they pull the curtain, you're not supposed to come up here if you hadn't paid for a first class. You can't even go to the bathroom up there. Walls, curtains that separate should never happen in the church. And they do not happen between us and God. There is no privileged class. The walls came tumbling down, and we all have access to God through Christ. In the second place, when the walls come tumbling down, our relationship with each other is transformed. It's a new vision for the world. The death of our Savior may have tore down the walls that divide us from each other, but we continue to build them up. We build walls that separate us from each other, walls of our own making. Verse 15 says, out of diversity and vision, God's ultimate intention is to gather a community of friends. America seems to be right, seems to be based on Two unwritten principles, or maybe more than two. Exceptionalism and entitlement. The sad thing is, some people are more entitled than others. As Christians, the curtain needs to be torn down and thrown in the trash. As Christians, we are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation, not champions of privilege or exceptionalism or entitlement. When the walls come tumbling down in the third place, we get a new vision of the temple. By the time early readers were reading this, the temple had already been destroyed. Followers of Christ remembered what Jesus said and interpreted his death as the first stone in the foundation of this new house of God. You see, 
the walls of the temple, the physical temple, have been torn down. But that is a reminder and symbolic of the fact that you and I are the temple. But walls between priesthood and laity come tumbling down. That means the pastor and the people are equal. Each of us are believers. Pastors do not have benefits more than church members. One day very soon, I hear, you will be calling a pastor. And I think that's a good thing. I have come here in order to leave here. Uh, and I look forward to the day that you call a pastor. That's a good thing. But I just want to make a little reminder. All of you are the church. All of you have responsibilities to be the living, breathing, serving church. Don't depend on the pastor to do the work of the church. When your new pastor comes, don't pray, Lord, help, help our new pastor to be a good minister right here at First Baptist Church. No. I hope you pray, Lord, help all of us join together to be ministers of Christ with our new pastor here at this church. There was a day, maybe it was when we were in our heyday that we could open the doors and people would come to church. Uh, there's a new day. There's a new temple. And the temple is made up of people like you and I. And, and we need to go out and take the temple to the people. Uh, there was a day you could open the doors and people would come. It was kind of like an attractional kind of thing. Uh, I would like to say it needs to be a missional kind of church so that we're on mission in the world. When the walls come tumbling down, the whole sacrificial system was abolished. The new system means each of us are priests that sacrifice ourselves. We become living sacrifices going outside the walls of this building into the world that need people, that need the love of Christ. We are the temple. Now, I want to pause and say this is a beautiful building, and it is important to have a place. And, and this has been the place that, that you have met God and that you have experienced the transforming power of God in this place. And this place is important. This place is not your God. You as individuals are the temple. A number of years ago, the church my wife and I are now members of, St. Matthew's Baptist Church, back in 1982, one of the coldest days on record, uh, some mischievous boys set fire to the building. On Sunday morning, it burned to the ground. Uh, that's before cell phones. But the word got out. They made arrangements quickly, uh, and they met at the Chapel of Southern Seminary down the road. And, and the pastor at the time, Altus Newell, said that morning a truth that was said again and again in the days ahead. He said, our building is gone. But pointing to the people in the congregation, he said, you are the church. The church is right here. And in the days ahead, people would meet people on the street and say to them, I hear your church burned. And over and over again, the reply was made, no, our building burned, but our church is alive and well. Well, God forbid uh, the building would be destroyed. You have a beautiful building. You need to maintain the beautiful building, but the building called the church is what is important. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets 
with Christ as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually in a dwelling place. He's using all of us, irrespective of how we got here in the building of this new temple. When the walls come tumbling down, everybody has full access to God. When the walls come tumbling down, our relationship with one another is transformed. We don't need walls anymore. When the walls come tumbling down, we are the temple of God. In a world where relationships are frayed, in a world that has become increasingly polarized, we as Christians have a major, major responsibility to be ambassadors of reconciliation. Our job is to keep the walls down. Our job is to work on our relationships with each other, even with folks we don't identify with and look like. Our job is to be the temple of God in the world. That is our challenge today. May we pray. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Help us to see your presence burning in the hearts of others. Grant that we may be united in a fellowship of love and prayer. May we be your witnesses in the world. And when things are tough, give us the stamina to follow you. Enable us to extend grace and mercy to others, even as your grace and mercy have been extended to us. We pray all this in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment, we're singing a hymn of commitment. I encourage you to make a commitment to be God's temple in the world and be ministers and ambassadors of reconciliation. May we stand as we sing. we leave no longer strangers but members of your family 
We are brothers and sisters through the blood of Jesus Christ. Together we're being built into a holy dwelling place where God lives by the Spirit. So as we go out, we go with joy and confidence to love and serve the world. We go together. We go with your power. I pray in your name. Amen.